everyone and welcome to another episode of Cinnamon Stitches. I'm your yarn host Jennifer. Today we are going to do a tutorial on this washcloth. It should not take us very long and I do like to stick with you through the entire thing and make it with you. We're going to see if that happens again today. Um, the reason I like this washcloth is it is very textured and it has all these really cool sideways lumps. So the blocks actually go this way instead of this way. And I mentioned in passing that I might show you guys how to make this. And I got a lot of people asking, please, please show me how to make that. So that's what we're going to do today. Now, we are just using our everyday kitchen cotton from Premier Yarns. You can use any cotton you want. Any cotton you prefer does not matter to me one bit. I am using a much bigger than recommended hook. Um, Premier Yarns for a size 4 weight of this cotton recommends a 5.5 millimeter hook. I am working with a 7 millimeter hook. Now this is going to cause much looser, much larger holes in your work. If you don't mind that, grab a 7 millimeter. If you don't have a 7 millimeter, just grab a little bit bigger than you think that you, well, that your yarn recommends because, 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 um, with working with the block stitch, you're going to have loops on your hook. And it's always better to have a little bit bigger of a hook when you have loops on your hook. Because otherwise it'll be too tight and it'll be difficult to work with. And you could lose, possibly lose loops. It's a whole thing. Alright, so we're going to start with this pattern needs to be a multiple of 5. So if you can divide the number by 5, if it ends in 5 or 0, you got the number. Okay, so... <laughs> 5, 10, 15, 20. We're going to probably do 25 because I'm using a big hook. You can also do 30 if you're using a smaller hook. You could do 20. It does not matter. Just make it a multiple of 5 and then we're going to add 3 on the end. We're going to start with a slip knot. We're going to chain 25. Twenty-five, and then we're gonna add three, and then we are going to single crochet in the second chain from the hook, and each one across, single crochet. I started this initially with a smaller hook because my furls hooks are upstairs. I had to restart the whole tutorial because I was working with a boy hook and I realized I hate the hook. So I was like, you know what? We're just going to use a bigger hook. This is just how we do things on cinnamon stitches. We just kind of go with the flow, go with what feels right. And I crochet much better, more smoother with the furls. So make sure you have your favorite hook. I don't care if it's a furls. If you like boy, use your boy. If you like clover, doesn't matter to me. I always get lots of questions on my hooks. And I always say just use. Like I love my furls hooks. Don't get me wrong. Use what is comfortable to you. Use what you like. And yeah, sometimes that takes buying hooks. And hating them because I have done that plenty I have lots of hooks I hate <laughs> I don't use them I don't get rid of them either all right we're almost to the end I'm gonna chain up one the next row is gonna be single crochets again. We're just building the bottom of the washcloth here. So just single crochet in each stitch across. Now 
Now, if any point in this tutorial there is loud noises, I apologize. I do have two dogs that are kind of spastic. And I have two children who are currently outside in the pool. But they may come in at any moment. And Little Man is rather loud. So, just fair warning for anyone who is new here. I do have life noises. And there's usually a wind chime in the background. Which... I tell this story pretty much in every tutorial. The wind chime will always be in my videos because it is on my front porch and my office is next to my front porch. And the wind chime is a gift from grandma and grandpa and it is the last gift I received from grandma and grandpa before grandpa passed away. So you will it will never ever not be in my videos. It will never not be in the background of my life. So... I always say that because tutorials, especially people get a little bit ornery and picky and want to nitpick about noises. So there could possibly be loud shattering noises at any moment. All right, so we did two rows of single crochet. And then we are going to chain three. One, two, three. And in the next stitch, we are going to, let me look at my pattern. Because this is a new pattern to me. I do not have this memorized at all whatsoever. We're going to double crochet in the next stitch. So that first chain three counts as a double crochet. And then we're going to double crochet in the next stitch. Then we're going to chain one. Skip the next stitch. And then double crochet into the next one after that. So this is what it should look like. Then the next part gets a little funky because we are going to do what is called the block stitch. And the block stitch, you're going to yarn over, insert your hook around the post, pull up a loop, pull off two loops. We're going to do it again. Yarn over, pull up a loop around the post, pull off two loops. Yarn over, go around that same double crochet. Pull up a loop, pull off two loops. You should have four. We're going to do this one more time. Yarn over, pull up a loop, pull off two loops. We will have five, one, two, three, four, five. You're going to yarn over and pull through all of those stitches. And that is our slanted sideways block stitch. Okay. Now, we're going to chain one. Skip this next stitch and go into the next one. We're going to do it all over again. So we're going to double crochet. Double crochet. Okay. Then you're going to yarn over. Go around from the top into the bottom around that post. Pull up a loop like we're doing a double crochet. We're only going to pull off the first two loops. You're going to yarn over again. Around the loop. Pull up a loop. If you have to hold these, it's perfectly fine. Pull off two loops. Now you have three. Yarn over. Pull up a loop around that post. Pull off two more loops and you will have four. Yarn over. Pull up a loop around the post. Pull off two and you will have five. That is your block. You pull through all. Chain one. Skip the next single crochet and go into the next one and double crochet. And we're going to do this all the way across. Okay. So you're going to do... A double crochet, yarn over, go around the post, take off two loops, yarn over, go around the post, take off two loops, yarn over. You guys got this? If you have to keep watching this, it is okay. This is kind of weird. We have four now, so we know we need to do this one more time. Pull through, chain one. Now, the nature of these blocks is they stretch out kind of far, and it's going to look like you're, sl you're, you're have too many stitches. And this is, when I first did this, I was like, something's wrong, this is not right. I promise the next row is going to correct all of this. So we're going to skip this one. You guys want to get in a little bit closer. I'll try to get you in a little closer. 
We're going to skip the next single crochet and go into this one. We're going to double crochet. Okay. Yarn over. Go around the post. Take off two. Yarn over. Go around the post. Take off two. Yarn over, around the post, two, whoops, now we have four, yarn over, around the post, take off two more, we have five, yarn through all of them, chain one, we got another block, we're going to do this all the way across, skip the next one, double crochet, I'm going to speed it up a little bit for you guys, if you guys get lost, you can always rewind. So it's like we're doing like a puff stitch or a bobble type stitch, but we're doing it around that post. So that's what makes it a sideways block. Five, take that off, chain one. Take off two, yarn over, around the post, take off two, yarn over, around the post. Take off two. Chain one. And see if you lay it down, this looks like it's just too wide. And I promise it will be okay. We're gonna put double crochet. Just like we have this whole time. Skip that one. Chain one, skip one, double crochet. Yarn over around the post. I forgot to tell you, there will always be a Christmas clock in the background, too. <laughs> jingle bells, jingle bells, it is summertime. We're crocheting a washcloth. It's a real good time. All right, so <laughs> we're going to just keep making these block stitches. Keep making the block stitches. This is why I use a bigger hook because it is so much easier to get all of those loops around and off when you're doing it that way with a bigger hook because I've had problems where it just gets too tight. And we are almost to the end. What we're going to do on the end is a little bit different. We're going to try to replicate the beginning where there's two double crochets. And of course, with everything, if your stitch count is slightly off, we just fudge it. We don't frog on this channel. Because this, this is all, this is all a learning. I don't, I don't know if I did enough stitches or we'll see. All right, so. We have a bunch of stitches left here. We're skipping one and we're putting a double crochet here. And just like I said, I have too many stitches. So we're just gonna go in that last stitch and put a double crochet to mimic over here. So we have two double crochets. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 block stitches and two double crochets on either side. As long as you have that, you will be fine. Okay, we are going to chain one and turn. This is where it gets weird. Now see, in the normal world, because this has an archway, you would think that this is just way too big. It's not ever going to work because all these stitches are like just too big. But this is kind of a cool trick and this is what I really liked about this pattern. We're going to go into the top of the double crochet we created here and make a single crochet. We're going to just do single crochets across this whole row. Top of this double crochet, we are going to put a single crochet. On the top of each one of these blocks, you are going to put two single crochets. So you want one somewhere here on the top and then one somewhere here on the top. Okay. Just gonna do that all the way across. Now, if you're having a hard time, you can just pull on these, okay, and see. 
If you if you have a really hard time, you could put a stitch here and a stitch in between, and then a stitch here and a stitch in between. But what I'm doing is I'm trying to grab the top of that cluster and put a stitch in there. Doesn't have to be perfect. And then a top here on this corner and put a stitch there. And that will give us the right amount of stitches all the way across. Just don't overthink it. If you can't get in, go into that chain space and put a stitch in. But you want two, the equivalent of two stitches for every block stitch. And then this is what makes the block stitches stand up a little more. And it what this is what makes the, the washcloth not waver so much. It's just putting these single crochets in. It brings all the stitches together. It is really a cool effect. And sometimes with the top of those block stitches, they want to curve over a little bit. And so you might have to just pull that forward to get in there the correct way. But don't overthink it. It's a washcloth. As long as there's two stitches somewhere in the top of this block stitch, it'll be fine. And I think when I'm done talking to you guys, with this tutorial, I think I'm going to go hop in the pool with the kids. Hopefully they're still out there. All right, now we got to the end where the double crochets are. So we're going to put a double crochet in the top of that double crochet. And this was a chain three space. So you want to put a double crochet in the top of the chain three space. And chain one and turn. And you see how it brought all of the stitches back close together so it's not curving anymore. It is just straight. That is one of the cool things that I thought about this pattern was so neat is that it looks like it's going to be wrong, but it's not. So this next row, I'm sorry that I keep bumping the camera. The next row we are going to do half double crochets in each one of those single crochets. This just gives a little division between the block stitches. We'll just do half double crochets. And if you can see, I have made those single crochets a little too tight. So I'm going to try to loosen up the half doubles a little bit. Something that happens, you know, you get a little tense, you get a little anxious about something, you just tighten up a little bit. Half double crochets in every stitch. Can you guys hear the birds outside? It's not real loud. I have bird feeders on my front porch next to the wind chimes. So there's always birds on my front porch too. I rather enjoy their company. I can't really tell what bird that is though. We have a mockingbird out there and she sings and sings and sings and I can never tell what kind of bird she's trying to imitate or what kind of bird you know, she's pretending to be today. Okay, we're going to chain one. We're going to turn again. And this next row is going to be single crochets. So we're going to do block stitch, single crochets, half double crochets, single crochets. So this will be a row of single crochets. almost summer vacation. I cannot believe it. Kids are going to be back home, but we have already gotten approval from the school board that the kids will be back to school five days a week next year. I just feel like things are finally starting to come back to normalcy a little bit. I'm just so excited about that. There's so many things in life that we're taking for granted. Just little things. 
just being able to put up things in a schedule even that just got completely just tossed haywire because of this whole pandemic and whatever and I just feel like things are finally starting to head back towards normal. I mean, it's going to be a long time before they're completely normal, but all right, we're at the end of the row. I'm putting our last single crochet. I'm going to chain three, one, two, three, and turn, because this is going to be another block stitch row. All right, so we are going to go into not the stitch we chained out of, but the very next one, and we're going to put a double crochet just like we did. And then we are going to chain one and skip the next stitch and we're going to start our block stitch so that means a double crochet yarn over take off two loops like we're doing a, a double crochet but we're not finishing it whoops too many yarn over do it again And again, till we have five loops on our hook, draw through all of them, chain one, skip the next cro single crochet and double crochet in the following stitch. And block stitch it up, baby, block stitch. This is going to be a block party. Block party. And the kids are coming in. They were not very long. I'm going to skip the next one. Double crochet. Yarn over. Pull off two of those loops. Yarn over. Pull off two of those loops over and over again until we have five loops on our hook yarn over pull through all chain one skip the next stitch sounds like they went back outside i hope so that's gonna be a long summer of mommy 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 Four and five. Chain one. I hope that you have the hang of this block stitch already. <laughs> We're skipping that one, going into this one, double crochet. Yarn over, wrap it around, pull it up, take off two. Yarn over, take off two. Keep doing that till there's five. This was very easy to me because these little blocks are just little like there's some sort of popcorn stitch, bobble stitch. What? Like I I never know the difference between a bobble and a popcorn. Like whatever, they're all the same to me. They're, they all just have a slight, <laughs> a slightly different technique. But we're just wrapping it around that double crochet. And you can do this on a much larger scale and put like a row of these in a baby blanket or a sweater or. You could do you can use a stitch on just about anything. It doesn't have to be a washcloth. Chain one, skip one. Now see this happens to me a lot where it crosses over like that. Because I accidentally pulled through the wrong ones. And you always want to go in there and uncross it. Because your next row will be much more difficult to work with. If you have stitches that are crossed over each other. Which I do all the time. Like all the time. Especially when I'm crocheting really fast. I get that crossed over stitch effect a lot. And then I end up having to like finagle it to get it to, to work for the next row. I have really enjoyed making these washcloths. I mean, I have always liked making washcloths. They are my downtime, my not think time. They are the thing that I go to when I want to crochet, but I can't figure out what to crochet 
or like my thing I'm gonna go do when I'm on a, a short trip somewhere because washcloths really only take me about a half an hour 45 minutes on most occasions and um, because I now have a reason to do this for Rose and for my niece I have been every night taking an hour to myself to make a couple washcloths and I just really I really find it enjoyable all right so how many I think I messed up one two three four five six seven eight nine yeah one more I messed up somewhere You just always, and see, this it's okay to have mess-ups. This is a washcloth, you know, it doesn't have to be perfect. I clearly missed a stitch somewhere, probably from talking. So we're going to fudge it. As long as you have 10 blocks, and you count, and two double crochets on either side of those blocks, even if you have to fudge it, it is, it's going to work out. Because your stitch count will still be the same. I'm going to chain one because this is going to be our single crochet row. Every row directly after. And see how it's wanting to wobble and weave and be all crazy again? A single crochet will fix that. So we're going to single crochet in the top of the double crochet. Top of the next double crochet. And then two single crochets in the top of each of these clusters. Or blocks. Whatever you want to call these little, these little thingies. They look like little fish. That's what they remind me of. It's like fish, schooling fish. So tomorrow, don't have an official video planned and any of you that have been around for a while will know that when I draw a winner for the giveaway now the giveaway was the 20,000 subscribers giveaway I will link that video below um, the the winner will be picked tomorrow which is Friday I do not do a video to announce winners because a lot of times people don't watch those videos they either forgot they entered the giveaway or something there's been so many times I've made a video or an announcement announcing the winner and like months will go by and I still got the package so what I do what I like to do is I contact the winners directly so that's what I'm gonna do so if I watch your watch your um, your notifications to see if I emailed you or messaged you or commented you back because that has worked so much better for me all right now we put two in the top of every one of those little stitches we got the two double crochet on the end we're gonna double or single crochet single crochet in those I'm gonna chain one and turn and as you can see it pulled itself back together again it's like Humpty Dumpty we gotta put them back together now this is the half double crochet row we're gonna half double crochet all the way across in every stitch I apologize for my sore throat I can hear that my voice is starting it and I didn't of course I didn't bring water of course I didn't bring water I knew I was gonna be talking for about an hour did not bring water you're gonna just continue this pattern until you reach and you can actually make a hand towel out of this as well I also in case you didn't know I have a hand towel tutorial you could do this pattern for a hand towel and just follow the rest of the hand towel tutorial so you would make this how the length you want your hand towel and then you could follow the other tutorial on how to do the decreases to make the, the the hanging part of the towel this would make a really nice bathroom towel I'm really loving texture like right now in my bathroom I have a basket weave hand towel and it just seems to dry better because like all those little ridges in the basket weave like helps wick the water away it helps to pull the water off your hands better Remember, it's just half double crochets. And I think I'm going to hit the end of this row and hit pause and go grab some water. So that my nice calming voice comes back. <laughs> and not the gruff, the gruff billy goat voice. 
And then we hit that in the row. We're going to half double crochet. We're going to chain one and turn. And I will be right back. All right, I'm back. I got a little bit of water. And so you may hear me swallowing or drinking from moment to moment. Got a big, tall glass of ice water. This next row, I feel like there's hair. Yeah, there's hair. I didn't feel I'm trying to get it off my... Feels like it's stuck around my feet. There we go. All right. So we did our single crochet, our half double crochet. We are back to the single crochet in this row all the way across. It's summertime, so of course my hair is falling out. So I keep getting hair caught in my fingers. I should have just pulled it up. Here. In the wash rag. Single crochet. I figured today was a good day for a tutorial because with everything's so busy this week with last week of school, graduation, just trying to get everything taken care of. Haven't gone officially grocery shopping in weeks. Just it's been busy. We just been going here and there. Which anybody knows about grocery shopping, you know that it's way more expensive to grab a little bit at a time. Um, instead of planning it out way ahead. It's been just chaotic and stressful in the house. Got a lot on my mind. <laughs> so I figured it's a good day to just sit and do a washcloth, washcloth with everybody. Now, that was our single crochet row, so we're going to chain three, two, and three, and we're going to start another block stitch row. You guys like the way that's turning out so far? How's yours looking? Is it looking like that? Even if it's not perfect, this is a practice, and you can rewatch this video and make it again. And this can go to, like, if you, you want prettier washcloths, this can go to your dishcloth pile. And if you're like practicing so that you can donate, like this can just be a home washcloth because you don't care if it's got like a mess up here and there. All right, so we're going to go into the very next stitch and do a double crochet. That's Scarlet panting because she was outside and it's hot. So we are going to. Those are our two double crochets, chain one, and we're going to skip this one. And every row is going to be exactly the same for this block stitch. You're going to have two double crochets, chain one, skip one. Put a double crochet to start your block stitch. And it's going to end the same with two double crochets. Every block stitch row. I don't think I have to walk you through this because now we're on the third row. You guys should have it by now. If you don't, just rewind. It's okay. There's no judgment whatsoever. We all learn different ways and at different levels. So there's never any judgment on my channel. Chain one, skip one. Block stitch. Double check my washcloth real quick. We did four of the block stitch rows so just keep that in mind we're on our third row we only have one more block stitch row to go after this so well we have several rows but we only have one block stitch row after this one to go I often listen to the noises in my house when I'm making a video and I wonder how much you guys can hear. <laughs> because Miss Scarlet is in the living room and just threw herself on the floor like she normally does. 
and all I heard was like her elbows just hit the floor and I'm like did they hear that back see now this irritates me so bad with yarn this has been happening a lot to me lately where there's just a fray and it pulls back it's been happening a lot Gotta kinda tell you something. This week's video where I showed you guys my hand dyed yarn. I got a little bit mad at Mr. Cinnamon. <laughs> I was like, you made one skein of yarn and everybody's talking about how great your skein of yarn is. Nobody likes my skein of yarn. I was all butt hurt. I mean, I wasn't, but like, <laughs> I was messing with him. I wasn't like super hurt. I was just like, really? Come on. That was funny though. I was teasing him. Told him he can't, he can't be on my channel no more. I also have some other news in my personal life that I am just dying to tell you guys, but I can't yet. And no, I'm not pregnant. I am not capable of having children. In case that comes up. Because I know with a lot of podcasters, like the first thing people think is <laughs> when a woman has news, she must be pregnant. I'm not. Any of you that have been with me for an amount of time know that I have suffered from infertility for years and years and years and years and years and years and Lucas was an absolute miracle and he came after Lucas is a little man by the way he came after a surgery that removed one entire ovary and most of the second ovary so he is an absolute miracle because I was told to expect menopause so we did our two double crochets on the end we did chain one, we're gonna turn. So yeah. I have two babies in heaven that we lost. And I I had infertility issues for about nine years before Lucas came into our lives. Between that's why Juju and Low Man are so far apart in age because we tried and tried and tried and we suffered losses and now he's here. And he is more than handful that makes me not ever want another baby again. <laughs> but also, I'm too old and I'm too, um, too infertile for that. My last tutorial, there was a new subscriber to the channel she didn't really care that I talked in my tutorials she didn't like that but that's just that that's how we do it here I talk I spend time with you guys while I crochet she wasn't rude about it at all she just said that she didn't learn this way and that she didn't like it which is fine people are allowed to express their opinion as long as they are polite so it's just the single crochet row And if you remember, the next row will be half double crochets. So we got the last two double crochet stitches here. We'll put a single crochet in each of those. Chain one and turn. This is what we have so far. We'll zoom you out a little bit since the washcloth's getting bigger. You guys don't need such great detail. You can go ahead and get started on that half double crochet row. Yeah. 
Miss Oreo is sitting behind me. Her chain is jingling. Oh, and now they're going to get grumbly and barky. Oreo, come lay down. Come lay down. Come on. And Oreo is always the instigator. Like, Scarlet will be quiet. Because Scarlet can't see real well. Um, the doctor said her vision is fine. The doctor clearly doesn't know what he's talking about. She is, she cannot see in the dark at all. Um, dark shadows scare the living crap out of her. And, um, if you're too far away, she, sometimes she can't tell it's you. But the vet says, oh no, she has no problem with her vision. And I'm like, I've known since I've had her. She's got, she's not like other dogs. She has vision issues. So... She relies on Oreo, and Oreo is very high anxiety. And Oreo is very barky and, like, jumpy. And the second she gets started, she gets Scarlet all riled up. Let's just half double crochets across. And the next row will be single crochets. So we're going to chain one and turn and do single crochets across. Last night our neighbor was in the yard. And I don't know what is going on with these people. Like, they're, they're directly next door to us. They have a big backyard just like us. They, again, these are single crochets. Um, they are not real big on the upkeep on their backyard. They never have been. But there has been like a serious increase in snakes in our neighborhood, which doesn't bother me because I know the difference between the poisonous ones and the non-poisonous ones. And I have handled and picked up quite a few non-venomous snakes and moved them out of my yard. I'm not scared of snakes. <laughs> Everyone else in the house kind of is. But like I used to play with garter snakes when I was little. So to me, I know a garter snake ain't going to hurt you. And I'm always respectful of them and their privacy and their, their space. So I try to always be gentle with the snakes and respect that they are wild. So I'm always very careful. But anyway, I think that may be a reason why the people next door have been cleaning up their yard. So like they've been almost every night out there and they are just not people that do this. <laughs> so it's a very unusual, be although they may have also gotten in trouble with the HOA. I mean, that is entirely possible. Um... He was out there yesterday, and he had this big leaf blower strapped to his back, and Scarlet was just raising hell. She was barking and barking, because she didn't like the noise, and it was dark out, and he looked like a shadow to her, so he was scaring her, because it was dark out, <laughs> and there's a loud noise, and it's scaring her. We're going to chain three, because this is going to be the last and final block stitch row. Before I move on with the tutorial and finish the stitch, I'm going to finish telling you the story because it is hilarious. <laughs> I got up and looked out the window and the man is standing there and you can tell when someone is working with equipment and not moving it because it makes a different noise than when you're actually using it. So it was on and he's standing in the center of his backyard for a good 20 minutes staring at his phone. Now, I'm assuming he was looking for a new song because he had headphones on as well. And this man is probably in his late 50s, early 60s. But he was just standing still. With his big thing strapped to his back, leaf blower thing. Just not doing anything but staring at his phone for the longest time. And Mr. Cinnamon was in the restroom at the time. He comes out and he... <laughs> I said, she was out there. She was out there raising hell and whatever. I told him about Scarlet. He's all, what's she barking at? What is that noise? And I said... The guy next door is just standing in the center of the yard with the leaf blower. He ain't been doing nothing for 20 minutes. And Mr. Cinnamon was taking a drink of his water. <laughs> when I was telling him this story. And he had to hold it because he was about to spit it out. Because he was trying not to laugh. <laughs> and I said, no, seriously, look out the window. He's all, I can hear that he's not moving. Because the motor is just <laughs> steadily just going. <laughs> And it, was just, it was the funniest thing. I don't know why he was out there. Just, I think, honestly, he was trying, because he lives with his mom. His mom lives with them. 
And I was wondering if his mom was getting on his nerves and he was just pretending to do yard work in the backyard. <laughs> oh, okay. Block stitch. I'm going to put a double crochet in the next stitch. Chain one. Skip one. Block stitch. Yeah, it was just, it was hilarious. But I had to call Scarlet in because she was just, she was being obnoxious. We're working really hard with her on it. She's still really young. She's only, she's still considered a puppy. And especially her breed. Like, I don't know. She's an American Staffordshire Terrier. And our last American Staffordshire Terrier was exactly the same. His name was Dede. He was like an angel of a dog. But the first couple years of his life, he was just dumb as a box of rocks. And so, she has been kind of the same. She's a little bit smarter than he was, but... I'm trying to work with her when she's getting worked up outside to come in the house when she's called. So we're doing some training with that. Because I don't let my dogs just bark. Like, that drives me crazy. Like, bark to alert, but don't bark to just be barking. Because there's a lot of dogs in the neighborhood that are just psychotic. But I think because where we live, everybody works. Like, everybody works out of the house. And they don't have time to be at home to properly train the dogs. To keep the dogs, like, I don't know, well taken care of. So the dogs stay outside all day long in the heat. Doesn't matter, in the snow. Because they're working. And the, do the, the amount of dogs that get out in this neighborhood of their yard is insane it's almost a daily occurrence that someone and it's always a new person their dog is getting out and running the neighborhood which is crazy i just think it's because nobody's home with the dogs the dogs every night like it sounds like there's dog fights in the neighborhood because they're just Somebody has, like, freaked out. One of the dogs has freaked out. Ah. <sighs> And the neighbors are all getting restless. And I think it's because quarantine happened so long. So they're all like extra cranky and moody about stupid stuff. Stupid stuff. Like I started the Facebook group for our HOA community in our neighborhood. Like I'm the one that started and run, started it and came up with the idea and all that stuff for the HOA. Because Mr. Cinnamon was on the board for a time. And so... I took myself off the group because I just didn't want to be a part of it anymore. And these people are just, they're so miserable. They're complaining about everything. Everything. It's like the whole neighborhood turned crazy. I think it's just from being cooped up for so long and they're bored and they're miserable unhappy people always like reach out to make other people unhappy it's just how it goes yeah it's going to be in the upper 90s today I am going to most definitely go get in my bathing suit and jump in the pool. Get a couple laps in, try to loosen up the arthritis in my back a little bit. All right, we're chain one because this is going to be our single crochet row. We are almost done with this washcloth. We only have a couple rows left to go. We have a single row, a single crochet row, a half double crochet row, and another single row, and then we're done. And then we're done. See my hair? I messed with my hair and it's all on my fingers again. Might be time to cut my hair again. I don't know. I like it long because I like putting my hair in braids. 
So remember, that's a single crochet row. We're going to put two single crochets in each of these blocks. I got an email the other day from a company that is on a lot of YouTubers' videos right now trying to promote ad ads and stuff. And they're like, we will pay you X amount of money for so many views on your video if you just talk about this business that they have. And I was like, first of all, I don't do commercials. Like, I, ad, YouTube does ads. I don't personally do commercials on my videos, which was my response. And then secondly, I was like, do you realize that my subscribers... I would say 65 to 80 percent of you guys are over the age of 45 and a lot of you are a lot of you are over the age of 60 and that's just my demographics like YouTube keeps track of that and they tell me what you guys' ages are and where you live and all that stuff and they don't tell me like where you live they tell me like what country you're in that kind of stuff so I was like my my fan base is not your demographic because it's an internet based thing and it's just I don't think it's anything you guys would be interested in at all like I'm not even interested in it so it's like I'm not doing commercials I'm sorry I get I've been getting slammed with that kind of stuff lately because my channel has had a good like increase lately and I'm very happy and very proud of that but that doesn't mean I'm going to be doing commercials for people at all chain one turn this row is half doubles It was just kind of entertaining to me. It felt good on one hand because they see me as a a big channel, even though I'm I don't think I'm a big channel at all. And they're like they want me just to say their name as advertisement, but that's not my thing. I just want to be here and have fun and crochet and and do all this fun stuff. Tell you about the things that I like. So, yeah. I'm going to do the fold over test and see if this is, because it's looking a little long to me. And I told you guys in my last wash rag tutorial, I don't like rectangle washcloths. I like them to be square and this is looking a little rectangle to me. So that's going to determine if I put another row in or not. You want to tell if your washcloth is a square. You fold it over in half. And if it folds perfectly in half to where it touches the edges, it makes a perfect triangle. It is a square, so I'm not going to add another row. If you want to add the single crochet row, you go ahead and do that. But I'm going to tie off. So I don't know where my scissors are. I'm just going to gonna cut off and tie that off. Weave in my ends, and I have a washcloth. I want to thank you for joining me, spending a little time with me during this tutorial. Whoops, going the wrong direction. I hope you made one of these washcloths and enjoyed it. Now I have two. <laughs> I really enjoyed this. Um, if you make these washcloths, I would love to see pictures. I've had quite a few people from the last tutorial put pictures in my Facebook group, which is linked below. You can also go on Instagram if you have an Instagram and you can post a picture on your page and just either at sign cinnamon stitches or you can hashtag cinnamon stitches i follow both and they will notify me if you upload a picture of your washcloth i would love to see your washcloths you can do these different colors if you want so if you want to do like a section of blue and a section of white and a section of blue that would be a beautiful washcloth so change it up i want to see you can do this in variegated but um 
I, d I don't know that I would do it in variegated. I would definitely do this in a self-striping cotton. Premier Yarns has a wonderful self-striping cotton. So does, I think, Sugar and Cream. And this would look beautiful in a self-striping cotton because the cottons are, stripes are about that thick. So, all right, guys, thank you for joining me for another washcloth tutorial. I will be back tomorrow and I will personally contact the winners of the giveaway. I may or may not have a video tomorrow. I am not sure. Next week, we will work on the tank top tutorial for the beautiful tank top that everyone is calling a dress that was on Brunhilda yesterday. <laughs> but um, I will see you guys soon. Bye.